is understanding what kursi is. Kursi is translated bizarrely by many translators of the Quran as the throne. I found this very difficult to take because in the Quran we have two concepts. We have the arsh and we have the kursi. And arsh is translated in English to throne. Kursi is the chair. Yes. And therefore the translation of it as the verse of the throne is inaccurate. Because we have verses such as one in Surah Taha where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa Yes, the word Arsh is used. Let's understand Ayatul Kursi very briefly but pay more attention to the area of contention and how the school of Ahl al-Bayt presents its opinion with regards to the actual meaning or what the Ahl al-Bayt have come forward to explain what Kursi is, what is the reality of Kursi. Find that as far as this is concerned, there is a movement which is known as the anthropomorphism movement, which means the attribution of characteristics that human beings have to the divine. Because there are verses in the Quran that, say, for example, says, Yadullahi fawqa aydihim. Their hands is up, the hand of God is above theirs. That they will look at the face of God on the day of judgment, yes? And therefore, there are different theological schools of thought in understanding these verses which are known as mutashabih, metaphorical verses. The first school of thought is the Ash'arite school of thought. They said, they come forward and say that as far as the kursi and the arsh is concerned, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is something that we cannot comprehend. It is something that we do not understand. Therefore, we ignore. We do not talk about it. Talking about it is bid'ah. Because I remember reading the founder of the Maliki school of thought, Malik ibn Anas, one day was asked by somebody. He said, How did he sit on a throne? Because, you know, in Surah Taha, that's how some people understand it. The response was, He sat. I don't know how he sat. Yes. Then uh, all of a sudden that individual wasn't happy. So he said to him, how can he sit on a particular throne? Yes. And the response was, you are of the people who have gone astray. That you are asking too much. You should not delve into these areas too much. Our sixth imam says, I'm surprised by the people, according to the narration, who says God sits on a throne. Yes, if he sits on a throne, that means the throne can encompass him. That means the throne is more powerful than him. Yes, how can you accept that particular physical attribution? That's the first school. The second school says, no, a throne and the kursi are physical entities. And they cite narrations that exist in the world of hadith. such as one in Al-Bukhari, Tafsir al-Quran, uh, hadith 4471 from Abu Huraira, that the Almighty on the day of judgment places his feet in Jahannam and says to it, Hal min mazid, do you want more? Yes. So they attribute this and others with relate, relation to the throne and the kursi, that it is a physical entity. It is a kursi. It is a chair, but it's vast and it is something beyond our understanding, but it is a chair. And that's a literalist, very superficial uh, understanding of the Holy Quran that indeed the group of people known as the Salafis movement have undertaken. A third group of scholars have said, no, there are nine spheres that exist. Seven of them is the seven heavens. Then there is the Kursi and above it is the Arsh. But we don't know the reality of that. So they only limit themselves to the nine spheres that exist within the universe. The fourth group of scholars come forward and amongst them are quite a few from the school of Ahl al-Bayt. They say, no, of course, this is a metaphorical reference to the power and the majesty and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say, just like how the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you and I to understand certain concepts, therefore he uses terms that you and I use in dunya. Therefore you find that when a king sits on a throne, or a chair, that means they are in control of everything. That means everything is under them. This is something that indicates the power, the all-encompassing majesty of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala.
That's what the fourth category. The fifth category, however, is perhaps the most interesting and one that has delved further into the verses and is reflected more into the other ayat in the Holy Quran. The fifth category of the ulama, including Allama in Al-Mizan and others, have come forward and said no. This is, according to understanding of the riwayat of the Ahl al-Bayt, حقيقةٌ موجودة. It's a reality that exists. Arsh is there. Arsh and Kursi are there, but not necessarily physical. No doubt. That's the first level. But they say there are verses in the Quran which seemingly point to a very important reality about this issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says, وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ In chapter 69, verse 17, Allah says that the arsh of Allah is carried by eight. Carried? If it is something which is just the power of God, how can these eight, which according to riwayat, are either eight malaika or four from the prophets, yes, of Ulul Azim, and the rest, what, are four from the Ahl al-Bayt, including the Holy Prophet and Amir al-Mu'mineen. The idea is this carrying of the arsh, how can be understood? Then there is another verse, وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَاءِ His throne is over the water, in chapter 11, verse 7. Chapter 40, verse 7. الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ They're carrying the arsh, the throne of God. Therefore, they come forward and say, according to the riwayat of the Ahl al-Bayt and the understanding, the arsh and the kursi are related to the knowledge of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a center of the ilm of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala in addition to the center of the administration of the creation. And when these ayat say that these individuals or creations of God, they carry the arsh or they carry the kursi, it means they're being given this knowledge from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're being bestowed with this specific knowledge from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the understanding that they present is this. That the arsh and the kursi are not physical entities. Neither are they just simply denoting the power of the Almighty. But because of the riwayat of the Ahl al-Bayt, it denotes the all-encompassing ilm of the Almighty. And they link it by the fact that many verses that speak about arsh also speak about shafa'a. This indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware that when he gives knowledge, or when he gives the ability to, for an individual to intercede, he knows that they will intercede in the correct manner. Therefore, it is part of his what? His knowledge. Hence, we find the beautiful hadith from our holy sixth imam, Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. which comes forward and says and tries to denounce all these attributes that are given to God which belongs to human beings. And he says, comes forward and says in Tawheed al-Mufaddal, he says, مَنْ زَعَمَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَوْ فِي شَيْءٍ أَوْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ أَوْ فَقَدْ أَشْرَكْ Whomsoever claims that God the Almighty is in something or is on top of something or sits on something, then they have practiced shirk and polytheism. Yes. The Imma alayhum salam, one of the objectives was to refine and exonerate the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala from these particular attributes and indeed present the pure tawheed that the Quran indeed brings forth. That it is not about a kursi that is somehow uh, physical or a being sits on it because the Quran says, Laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing like him whatsoever. Yes, and the human being is not able in any shape or form to comprehend the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala with this particular aql that is indeed limited in its creation by the Almighty Jalla wa ala. And hence we find the importance of what? Of referring to the Ahl al-Bayt in understanding Ayatul Kursi, in understanding the verses of the Quran. <laughs>